Hello Minecrafters, this is Ethel, and this is a tutorial video teaching you how to build EtherIMP's improved variable timer system. And EtherIMP may be releasing a tutorial on how to do this as well, so I'm going to link his YouTube channel in the description, and I encourage you to check it out. He also has a video there uh, on his channel uh, showing you how to build his original variable timer, which uses a lever override method. So, a word of caution, uh, this is not the simplest thing to understand, and I'm probably not the best person to explain how to build this either, so we're both going to have to try our best. And uh, the main use, the intended use of this system is for uh, sophisticated cannons. Um, so sophisticated cannons usually only have one button to fire the cannon and the way this works is uh, one wire leads to the TNT boosters which are what propel the TNT missile into the air and then another wire leads off to uh, a certain number of uh, redstone torches which creates a delay before it sends a signal to the TNT missile So the boosters need to be activated before the missile. And the missile needs to be activated before the TNT boosters explode. Otherwise, you're very likely to destroy your cannon. And so the way this is a variable delay system is different from a fixed one is... Uh, the fixed uh, delay system, it'll pass through a certain number of torches, like 32 or whatever, and then it'll always have that same delay, and the missile will always explode after the same amount of time. With a variable one, uh, the main flaw with the fixed one is you're pretty much limited to a certain range. Uh, with a variable one, you can switch between being a short-range cannon, medium, far, very far, by adjusting a few levers. And so, it's important to explain uh, how TNT works, the timing on it. Basically, it explodes after 80 ticks in the game and current passing through a redstone torch uh, counts as two ticks. A lot of people mix that up. but uh, So every redstone torch adds two ticks onto the delay. So that means the maximum delay you want from the time you activate your boosters to the time you activate your missile is uh, 80 ticks or the current passing through 40 redstone torches. So with the variable timer system we're about to build, we're going to have four levers attached to it, and these four levers are going to give us four different options for the timing on the missile. Uh, the first option is going to add a zero or two torch delay, the second option is going to add a 0 or 4 torch delay. Third option is a 0 or 8. And the fourth option is a 0 or 16. And uh, by combining these four options in different ways, we can have any number between 0 and 32 that's even. And we're going to be adding this onto a base delay of 8 torches which means we can make any number between any even number between 8 and 40 so 8 10 12 14 whatever all the way up to 40 before the TNT missile explodes and this gives us a lot of control over the timing so enough talking let's start building We will continue once it's light out again. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is wire in our 
zero or two torch delay option uh, directly from the button here. So what we need to do first is split the wire and one of these wires, uh, let's make it this one, is going to be our shortcut wire and the other one is going to be the delay. And so what we need to do is build an AND gate that the shortcut connects to. And for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to connect the lever directly onto the AND gate. Uh, normally you would run wire from a control. Uh, if you look in my uh, 360 Canon and underwater Canon videos, you'll see I have like a control panel with these levers on. And you would just run the wires to the AND gates. But to keep things simple, we're just going to do it like this. And so this one, we need to add an additional two torch delay because that's that's what this is. And I like to label the AND gates so I remember. And when I say plus two, I mean plus two torches, not ticks. So we need to create a difference of of two torches because even in the shortcut wire, uh, the current passes into this torch and then out this one. That's two torches. So we need to make a delay of four torches here for that difference of two. And we're just going to use repeaters to do that. That's two, and then four. Okay. So this wire passes through two torches. This wire passes through four for a difference of two. This one is two torches longer. And then we join the wires back together. And so what happens is, if you press this button, we're going to remove this first. If you press this button, you can see those wires are not lighting up. you flick the lever, then they light up because power is allowed to pass through this AND gate. And so it takes the shortcut then. So since it passes through this one first, the signal gets ahead of this wire and this wire becomes irrelevant. But if this is closed, uh, power can't pass through here. It's forced to go through this one and take the long route. And that is how you create the variable delay. So this is just a shortcut. That's all it is. OK, so then from this wire, Uh, we continue and do the exact same thing again. Uh, we'll make we'll make it sp split here. Actually, uh, so we're going to create a split like over here. You're going to have another AND gate. output, wire, and we're going to attach another lever, and this is going to be our plus four, 
Again, that's plus four delay in torches, not ticks. Okay, and so again, this and yeet is two torches. So to get that inference of four, we need to pass our we need to make our long wire uh, six torches. So six minus two is four. And so we'll do our repeaters again. There are many ways to make this more compact, such as doing vertical wiring. But for simplicity, we're going to do it using just repeaters here. Okay. So, like I said, from this point, the, the wire splits into two options. You can take a shortcut or take the long route. Then it rejoins, and then it splits again. Short route, long route. Then it joins again. And you are allowed to place the wire in front of your AND gates, such as over here, and you can join it that way. So the wire joins here again. And then we split it. Place another AND gate. This is going to be our plus eight. And our long, our delay wire is going to be over here, just using repeaters. Each repeater adds two. And we need to get that eight difference. Since this is two, we need ten. Ten minus two is eight. Oh yeah, forgot our lever here. That's uh, that's eight there. Okay, and you always want uh, the last repeater to end up near your output from the AND gate, just so that's easy to join them together again. It uh, takes a bit of practice to do this neat. This isn't neat. If you want to see a better example, check out my uh, Canon videos. It's a lot more uh, compact. Okay, so the wires join again, and then they split. Alright, so here's our split, and we are going to do our last option, which is the plus 16. So we need 18 for this for this delay wire. And uh, 
I'm going to wire that and then I'll show you in daylight a uh, working example of our variable timer here. Alright, it's all finished now and it's daylight again. Uh, we left off uh, over here or uh, not there over here at our 16 delay. So the wire split again goes into the 16 and then we have nine repeaters here, or 18 torches. And 18 minus the two from the AND gate is 16. So this wire is uh, plus 16 longer. And if they join together again, and they go to our TNT missile. So right now, uh, when this is when this is off, power can transfer through the AND gate. When it's on, it can't, and it's forced to take the long route. So right now we have all the AND gates uh, on, so it's going to take the longest route possible. So I'm going to press the button. And that is exactly 40 uh, redstone torches it passes through or 80 ticks, which is the maximum time you want to activate the missile. Now if we shut this off, you're going to see a noticeable difference in timing. So now it is um, 30... no, 24 torches long, because we activated our 16 shortcut and you'll notice it's much faster the first pulse is from the shortcut the second pulse is from it going through the long route but the second pulse doesn't matter because the TNT would already be activated Let's activate all our shortcuts, and this this will show us the shortest uh, shortest delay. Oh, one of our levers is interfering somewhere. Power should not be in this signal. Oh, maybe it's this one. Yeah, that was the problem. So all our shortcuts are open here to create the shortest delay possible. All the options are set to zero, uh, torch delay, and you'll notice it's very fast now, but it's not instant, and the reason for that is because we have a base delay of eight torches, because the absolute shortest route the wiring can take passes through four AND gates. which is eight torches. That's the shortest route. But you don't really want anything under an eight torch delay because the chances are the missile is not going to be very far away from the cannon if it explodes uh, in under eight uh, torch delay, which might blow up your cannon. 
so it's not really an issue if you do want the full full control though you can add uh, a fifth lever and make it a uh, plus six or whatever to give you that range from two to forty and then what you would have to do is add in three repeaters before you connect to the booster to make up for that uh, six torch difference so it's pretty cool um, I'm sure there's other uses you could use it for too besides cannons but cannons is what it was intended for and by uh, combining these lever options and different different patterns you can pretty much have any any delay you want for the missile so it's very very neat and uh, gives you lots of control over your cannon shots so that's how you do the either imps variable timer and I hope you enjoy and uh, thanks for watching